Like the Wild West in the United States, the Caucasus have played a key role in the movies of Russia and the Soviet Union. But Caucasians themselves haven't always been depicted in a flattering way. Now the Russian culture ministry says it wants to put an end to all that, asking filmmakers to show Caucasians and other ethnic groups in a more positive light. But what are the stereotypes the government says it's seeking to change? In the earliest days of Soviet silent film, Caucasians were shown as remote mountain dwellers with a deep attachment to their land and a fear of outsiders. The 1928 film Eliso depicted the real-life deportation of Chechens from the North Caucasus in the 1860s. At the start of World War II, Caucasians were often used to portray dependable, salt-of-the-earth characters meant to reassure an uneasy nation heading into battle. The 1941 film The Swineherd and the Shepherd hit screens as Hitler's troops were advancing on Moscow. It portrayed a budding love affair between a blonde-haired pig breeder and a Dagestani herder. The popular movie sought to drive home the notion that at a time of crisis, the Soviet friendship of nations was stronger than ever, even if it was a Russian actor who was tapped to play the Dagestani hero. Much of the time, native Caucasian actors were selected to play their countrymen on screen, including the best-known Caucasian of all, Georgian-born Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. Georgian actor Mikhail Gelavani had the dubious distinction of portraying the Soviet strongman in a total of 16 films, reportedly because he was a slightly taller and handsomer version of the leader himself. By the 1960s, the role of Caucasians in Soviet movie-making was changing from noble highlander or determined leader to something decidedly more light-hearted. Films like Abduction in the Caucasus, a comic spin on a poem by Alexander Pushkin, became an instant classic when it debuted in 1967. The film poked gentle fun of Caucasians as lusty drinkers and womanizers whose local customs often left their better educated but more innocent Russian counterparts in the lurch. The stereotype endured with movies like Mimi No in 1977 cementing the popular image of Caucasians as lovable, if slightly daffy characters, with thick mustaches and even thicker accents. Other films look to the Caucasus as a source of oriental mystery, like the 1966 movie Bella, an adaptation of Mikhail Lermontov's 19th century novel A Hero of Our Time. The movie shows its heroine, a Circassian princess, enchanting her Russian suitor with dance and song, even as she acknowledges that a permanent barrier stands between her as a Muslim and him as a Christian. But with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the start of the Chechen Wars, the cinematic image of Caucasians as mysterious or affable neighbors began to change. Alexei Balabanov's 2002 action film War shows Chechens as cruel and relentless militants determined to drive Russians out of the North Caucasus at any cost. And the August 2008 war between Russia and Georgia saw some of the most pointed cinematic messages yet. Russian films like Olympias Inferno and the Kremlin-financed August 8th portray Georgians as steely aggressors and put blonde Slavic heroines at the center of the danger. Both movies reflected the Kremlin's message that its own fighters were the victims of a vicious campaign in their former South Caucasus backyard. Now that the Kremlin is calling for change in movie images like these, many Caucasians are skeptical. They say it may be years before Russian film begins to show the people of the Caucasus as they really are, rather than as exotic, cold-blooded, or even cartoonish neighbors.